Hi all, came across this really cool coding challenge on the Coding Train channel. It's spinning a cube in 3D. I thought I might give it a go on my Commodore 64. Managed to get it down to seven lines of code. Check it out. So here's the code. As you can see, it's uh, line number zero through to six and it's highly documented and well structured, not, and uh, but the reason it's not is because I try to compress this down into as few lines of codes as possible. So um, to make this a little bit more readable I've expanded out a little bit at least here in the CBM PRG Studio. One of the limitations of uh, some of the Commodore machines back in the day like the VIC-20 and the Commodore 64 is their basic was very limited. It didn't have any of the typical graphics commands that were available on machines of the day like line from an XY coordinate to another XY coordinate. The reason was uh, Commodore struck a deal with Bill Gates where they uh, got the uh, basic for a fixed rate and uh, that was a bit of a bad deal for, uh, for Bill because he missed out on royalties for the most popular PC um, or home computer ever, ever, ever built, the Commodore 64. Uh, but what that means is to draw a, a line on the standard Commodore 64 uh, it took quite a bit of peeking and poking and, and, and mucking around. And that's why I'm using something called Simon's Basic, which is an add-on. It's uh, often available in a cartridge or uh, it can be loaded up and I'll provide links below. So the graphics commands that I've used are part of the Simon's Basic. The coding train used an Apple II in the coding challenge. That's an example of a machine from that era which did have functions uh, like line command and so forth um, standard. And it also had double buffering so you can draw the image in the background and then move it to the foreground while you work on the next background image and go back and forth which allowed for smooth animation. That is not available within uh, Simon's Basic but I'll show you how I got around that. In the coding train challenge they use polar coordinates. I'm doing it a bit differently. I'm just using the mathematical formula for an ellipse and I'll show you why. So this is a, a simplified version of my program uh, that uh, draws just the four points at the top of the cube and uh, I'll see those four points how they follow the shape of an eclipse. Well you extend those points down and, you, and you're going to have a cube. So here's the program, and as you can probably see, there's uh, those four points following the uh, the eclipse, and the, those four points are then joined together along the top to make the top surface, extended down, and then the uh, uh, bottom surface is just the same as the top that's been offset uh, down the screen. Okay, and finally here's the program. First you put it into high resolution mode, that's where we uh, start using our graphics commands. A and B are part of the formula for an ellipse and if you look up that formula I'm sure that'll become clear. I won't go and explain uh, uh, the formula for an ellipse. I don't think my maths would, uh, I think I'd embarrass myself so I'll leave that uh, to, uh, to Google. Um, now these C, D and E are just some offsets. I'll explain that a little bit further. Now we uh, the X value um, which is uh, uh, as applied to the formula for an ellipse and it just goes from 1 to 100 and T is the four points. The first thing we do is we take the uh, previous values for um, the X and Y value for each of those points and store those. And the reason we want to do that is we want to delete each line before we render the new line. We don't have double buffering so each line is deleted and then redrawn and that's why capturing the previous values of X and Y are important. So now with the previous values stored let's actually work out all our coordinates. So I've got a, an array 1 through 4 of those 4 points that rotate all around the top that I demonstrated previously and here's the uh, formula that I've used for the ellipse to calculate um, these positions. Now I've actually only had to, had to use the formula for two of the points uh, for the uh, Y value. All the rest of the points in those four 
uh, points were extrapolated like minus v values and um, uh, to, to some other formulas. I won't go and expand on that. If you if you work your way through, I'm sure it'll make sense. So then we go through each of those points and we plot them out. The top line here, what it does, it draws um, the the lines as it cycles one through four from f the first point to the second point and then as we go through that loop it'll be the second to the third and then third to the fourth and when we get to the last one rather than going from the fourth to the fifth we just if it's four we go back to one so it cycles back around to the first point now that's this line here draws the top of the cube this draws the bottom of the cube and this draws a lines connecting the top to the bottom and then we next uh, loop through these four points and then we next loop through the 1 to 100 in the uh, um, x-axis and once we've gone through um, that rotation or that part of the rotation we then start all over again by going back to 10. I hope that makes sense uh, like and subscribe and all that. Thanks for watching.